Well, hello. <laughs> Here we are at the pointy end of the project. This is what the whole, well, it started off with my motivation was to get some bees to pollinate my trees, but I've gone and fallen in love with beekeeping, so I'm not really sure. <laughs> but anyway, it's good fun. I like both. I like growing a few nuts and I like growing a bit of honey. So it's kind of a good mix. I don't know how I fit it all in, but anyway, this is the purpose of the exercise was to try and get some fruitlets pollinated and the stupidest shit the other day I'm out here looking at the, at the flowers and I'm watching the girls and I'm thinking oh that's cool they can get some early feed so <laughs> I'm thinking how weird is that I wouldn't have given it a thought back in the day of always stressing out where's that bloody beekeeper get him here the flowers are gonna get me nuts on and it's like that's weird how you sort of transition and you start getting concerned to some I'm actually more concerned about my bees getting some pollen than I was getting too stressed out about the getting some almonds, so I don't know, it's getting weird, it's getting very weird out here, I tell you. So if I just pop one off, you can see all the little bits of pollen that are on the end. So the little pollen bits. And the ladies come along and collect the pollen, and then they get distracted and go to another flower and they're getting some more pollen and of course then it runs down the stamen anyway <laughs> run down the gale part and <laughs> turns into a nut if we're lucky obviously not all this blossom is going to become almonds because hell you know the tree would probably fall over and collapse and anyway what would I do next year if I had all that many almonds to sell <laughs> nothing so I don't know I'm sure there'd be some drama that would turn up Anyway, this is pretty much the start. These are just the early ones, so they're getting started. The rest of the block hasn't really started flowering a lot yet. I've got a couple couple popping out. So the idea is you have them flower over a bit of a period, and then the ladies come out and cross-pollinate, which is what the bees are for, if I didn't reiterate that. You need to get different varieties, because these flowers can't pollinate themselves. Well, there's some varieties now that can, but these ones particularly can't, and so they have to go to these flowers, to other flowers, and back again. Compatible pollens, I think it's called. I'm sure there's some scientific thing for it. I've been to courses where they talk about all the scientific stuff, and I think, well, you know, all I really need to know is that I need more than one variety to get a crop. I don't know that sort of where I'm at. God bless you, researchers out there in scientific land. It's all good, and I know you do a great job, and I just go with what you tell us, you know, honestly. I mean, so anyway. I'm not sure where we'd be without bees. I was listening to this report the other day and they were talking about doing pollination with a drone. They were going to get the pollen and sprue it across the jolly orchard. And I was trying to think now, okay, well, if they flower for a fortnight and you get one drone, there'd be a lot of drone flights because the jolly things would be flying around everywhere trying to keep up with it all. And who would collect the pollen is my question. My question to those people. Who's collecting the pollen? Probably my bees. So anyway, you still need them, regardless of how clever we think we are. Although I suppose, I suppose you could, that'd be a laborious job. You imagine wandering around if you broke off a little branch and you tapped it on the other branch. I know you can do that with tomatoes a bit and stuff, but gore. Even on this little patch, that could get a little bit hairy. <sighs> I don't think I'm doing that. That's just silly. That's a sillier idea than jolly being a beekeeper. Of course, I didn't actually realise, as an almond grower, why the girls didn't actually like to come out until it got warm. But once you start being a beekeeper, you start realising it's not necessarily about the bees needing to be warm when they're flying around. It's about keeping their babies warm back home. So when the temperature warms up, it's not as hard to keep the box warm so as they don't lose so many broods. So then the foragers can go off and they change jobs. I tell you what, it's a hectic life being a bee. You know, imagine that, rubbing your wings together all night to keep your babies. Oh, they remember having babies. Man, you don't get much sleep with that gig, do you? Golly gosh, that sort of enforced insomnia or whatever they call that. It's just as well they're golly and gorgeous, aren't they? Otherwise, you know, honestly, goodness me. You know, after you're, you're a bit delirious when you don't sleep for a month or so, aren't you? You're like, oh, okay, oh, and then they do something cute and smile at you and go, 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 and you go, oh, it's all good. And then they end up being all gorgeous and filming you and stuff, so, you know, it's all worthwhile. So if you've got a lung baby and you're wondering what the hell's going on, hang in there, it's all worth it in the end, because they're adorable anyway, and they make life worth living. And anyway, who else is going to look after you when you're old? So it's weird, isn't it, life? You go from, you know, care again have well what is it yeah when you're born you're basically at the mercy of everybody else 
If you happen to live long enough, you're at the mercy of everybody else again. I mean, it's kind of crazy shit, really, isn't it? So I don't know too much about anything, but I think it's fairly important for the little window that you have, that you're actually in control of your own life, to get out there and have some fun. And, you know, I don't know, do something cool. Hell, perhaps don't become a commercial beekeeper, but you can't, it's, it's kind of groovy if you like that. But whatever you're doing, you know, try to, en try to enjoy it too. I mean, heck, how long have we got? 50, 60 years, or what is the old thing? Three score, year and 10, whatever that is. I don't even know what a score is, but I'm guessing it's 20. So I suppose, I don't know, what is, what is a score? Anybody know what a three score is? But anyway, I digress. All I know is a really quick little window. They go, poof, and all of a sudden you're blooming 50 and you're looking down the barrel at 70 and you think, man, it's rocking in on. But, so, don't let it pass you by. Get out there and grab it by the balls and make a go of it. I reckon most of the ladies are looking pretty busy. I reckon they're having a good time out there getting some pollen. And a bit of nectar from the trees next door. Here we go, as you see them up there on the flowers. Well, this is where they're living, so they're bringing all the food back here for us. So it's a win-win situation. They get, to, they get to breed some young, and we get to breed some almonds. So hell, I tell you what, I reckon that's, is that what they call that um, pseudo, no, it's called something when everything works together. I can't think what it's called when it works together, but it does, so that's good. <laughs> anyway, I reckon the young lady's happy. It's not terribly hot, so they're not really crazy busy, but they're getting excited. Sure, all the little pollen sacks are full. All their little nectar tummies are full. The queen's in there thinking to herself, my golly gosh, there's lots of work to be done. I better make some more workers. So she's laying eggs like mad, and they're all getting fed with this pollen and honey that's coming in, or nectar, I should call it. It's not honey yet. And next thing you know, in another month or so, they'll explode and there'll be bees going everywhere, we hope. <sighs> Hopefully it's better than last year. At least at the minute it's looking pretty good. At least the weather's a bit kind. <laughs> anyway, ah, the things we do.